My name is Ronald Rael. I'm an assistant professor here at the University of California at Berkeley, and I am interested in seeking alternatives to the border fence between the United States and Mexico. The history of security in, in military terms is that we would construct walls and barriers that would divide. And today I think we are sophisticated enough to think of alternatives that not necessarily divide, but br actually bring people together. The first time I visited the wall and I drove towards the wall. It was incredible because I saw the issues come forward immediately. So for example, there was a small gap in the wall and suddenly as we drove we saw a fox coming through the wall and then coyotes and it was almost like a zoo in a sense and then there were owls and I realized that this wall is a funnel for wildlife. And at the same time I realized that they were crossing so easily that I too could cross so easily. So what was the point of the wall? Through design we can dismantle the idea of the wall by introducing new ideas that transform the wall into something else. This map shows the amount of solar energy that can be collected uh, in the United States, and we see that the most energy that can be collected is prevalent along the U.S.-Mexico border. Creating a solar farm along the border would maximize the potential to create solar energy, but also create a doubly secure border because you have the security, the private security of the solar installation itself, and also homeland security. The numbers of deaths since the construction of the fence have gone up significantly. The number one cause of death for illegal immigrants crossing the border is, is dehydration because it drives people to further extremes in order to cross the border. One proposal is to create a border fence that couples uh, solar energy collection with water collection. We would create beacons along the wall where water could be collected and distributed so that if there was someone in trouble in the desert, and it could be an illegal migrant or it could be a, an American citizen, they can then have access to water and shade, but also border patrol can be contacted so that it can save lives. The wall would be designed to collect rainwater. There would be a filtration system that is full of sand and, and gravel. And then water purifiers powered by photovoltaic panels could then clean and distribute the water to someone in need. When I approached the wall, children from the village across the wall ran towards me and we had discussions and I realized that the wall, because of the relationship between the border patrol and the children, is that they were sharing language and so the border patrol agents were teaching them English and they were speaking English and I thought, well this is fantastic. The wall in this case, while being very negative, actually has these positive implications. One aspect of connecting people across the border is in this design, which is the a library where people can exchange books actually through the wall itself. So you have a bi-national library where people can come and exchange books, check out books, have discussions, and it's uh, situated right in an urban environment uh, along the wall. And so in this case, the wall isn't seen as a divider any longer, but it's the facilitator for exchange. The New River is the most toxic river in the United States. It flows from Mexicali, Mexico, into Calexico, California. Instead of patrolling the people who are in the river attempting to cross, we should be patrolling the toxicities that are actually crossing into the United States. And so one of our proposals is a wastewater treatment plant. And here you see the New River where it crosses the border. And instead, that river could be funneled into a wastewater treatment plant, purified, and then released back into what is one of the bread baskets of the United States in the Imperial Valley. Many of the designs are satirical, but they're satirical to reveal the absurdity of the wall itself. And so, for example, there's many kinds of informal exchanges that take place along the border. People go and hug, communion is actually given through the border, border patrol agents will buy snow cones through the border and exchange money and food illegally, really, across the border. And so we wanted to heighten this idea by building an infrastructure of seating and tables and a place where food can be cooked in this idea for a burrito wall. Building a wall that's not a dumb wall, but is a social infrastructure that connects communities and connects lives together, I think is maybe the best step towards immigration reform.